Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today we are going to make some cute little shorts. Aren't they sweet? They've got a little ruffle hem um, made from donut fabric. We're going to use some different fabric today and we might do a different style, but this is a very good uh, beginner pattern uh, and beginning project for someone who's just learning to sew or use a serger. Uh, so I thought we'd do a quick video today, but first of all, if you're new here, my name is Kelly. Uh, and on this channel, we talk a lot about embroidery as well as sewing and some other fun crafty things. I have a sewing and embroidery business as well as a fabric business. Uh, and I've mostly done videos on embroidery, so I thought today would be fun to do one on sewing. So if you uh, follow a lot of YouTubers who do embroidery or you purchase a lot of embroidery, you know that they often come with tutus. So I, I've i sewn tutus and I can do tutus and if somebody wants a tutu, I will do a tutu. I don't like the tutu. I, I mean, I don't know. I just don't find it enjoyable. I don't know that my customer base is really into that. I mean, they're into over the top stuff. Don't get me wrong. Not that tutus are really over the top, but they can be. Um, I also find that you have to charge so much for them because of the material cost and the time cost. Um, so I, a while back, I put these on my Etsy shop and they've been pretty popular. And so I want to start doing them in other fabrics and have other choices and maybe make some shirts to match and all that good stuff and just kind of see if maybe these take off a little bit better than the tutus. I can make them a lot faster. Uh, the material cost is a lot cheaper, so I can sell them for cheaper. Um, I mean, not too cheap because you want to make your money back for them, but uh, cheaper than a tutu for sure. So I have, like I said, I have a fabric business. So today, I think what we're gonna, what the fabric we're gonna use is I have, th this is my favorite thing on my shop. Oh my gosh. It's the um, Riley Blake uh, Beauty and the Beast fabric. So I have this one. Um, I have this one that's just roses. And so it's not, you know, it doesn't have Beauty and the Beast on it. And then I have one more. Let me go grab it. Hang on. And then this is the third one. Um, and so I think what we might do, since again, I'm trying to make this a beginner tutorial I think what we might do is we might make two versions of the shorts. We're going to make one with the ruffle and I think I'll use um, these two for that. And then we're going to just make one that will be even simpler and it'll just have a straight leg, no ruffle. And we'll do that with just the one with just the Beauty and the Beast on it. But I haven't figured out what shirt I want to pair with the, these. But I thought we would just start with the uh, shorts first, and then we'll figure out the shirt later. So we're going to do all of this from printing the pattern to sewing everything in between. Now, the pattern I use, it's called Lucy, and it's from, which is also my daughter's name, which is kind of fun. But um, it's called Lucy, and it's from Made for Mermaids, and I already printed mine. I think they're one of the companies that <clears throat> doesn't like you to show the whole pattern piece. So I'll kind of throughout the video, I won't be showing their whole pattern, um, but you can go to madeformermaids.com. They have so many cute things. Let me just make sure. Yeah, yeah, that is where I got it. Um, but this would really, what we're gonna go through today, most shorts patterns are very similar. Uh, and the idea behind how you assemble a pair of shorts is the same regardless of the pattern and actually they this particular pattern company has great uh online they have great instructions they have uh i don't know if they have videos or not 
I'm, I'm an ex I was a pretty experienced sewer by the time I landed on them. One thing I was not experienced in is the printing. I'm, I'm used to old school patterns like, you know, I don't even know what they're called anymore, like Simplicity and all of those. I don't buy any of those anymore. I only buy online from places like this. So the only thing I really want to show you with the pattern itself is if you've never done this before, you do have to read the instructions because some companies or some websites, they're what's called trimmed and these are trimmed. So we're gonna tape these together. We don't have to do any cutting to tape them together. Sometimes on some pattern companies, you have to cut this line on one side to get them to go together, but just read the cutting instructions uh, from whomever you buy from and take it from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape these together. And all you do is kind of like I just showed you, you know, you just line everything up and you can look down here to make sure your little square is all together. Line everything up, tape everything together, and then cut your pieces. So I'm gonna go do that and then we'll come back. Okay, so we have our beautiful fabrics ready to go. Uh, I don't think I said it in the last video. If you want any of these fabrics, they are in my shop, which is linked down below. Uh, then we also printed and cut our pattern pieces. Like I said, they don't like for the whole thing to show, but uh, a couple things I wanted to point out on these. So it's got an option for just the straight, and then the one for the ruffle and we're going to do both today so we're going to do this one straight and we're going to do this one ruffle and we're going to cut this one first and then i'll cut this off and cut this one and then typically what i do is i go back and i tape them back together so next time because i hang on to these so that anytime i have this size i can use it the other thing i do is I, on the instructions, it, first of all, I mark the size, because again, I keep these for next time. Then I go on the instructions and it will tell you the strips you need to cut for the ruffle. And we'll do that on this fabric. And then also the elastic size. So that way, every time you go to make this pattern, you don't have to check the instructions. You know, once you make a few of these, uh, these shorts, they become really quick and easy. Now, one thing I also wanna point out is make sure you're paying attention to whether or not your fabric is directional, meaning we don't wanna put our pattern piece upside down. Like this is the bottom of the shorts. So you don't want Belle and the Beast to be upside down. Now on the other one, this one, it won't matter. But on this one, you have to pay attention to which direction you're laying things. So we're gonna lay our pattern piece down. Now you can, uh, you know, arrange it however you want. You can turn it upside, uh, you know, upside down like that if you need to, just don't turn it upside down like this. So, couple tips on cutting out the fabric. I personally use rotary cutters. I have this one and I have a small, or this small one. Um, I find this small one gets those little curves a bit better, but you can totally, nothing wrong with it whatsoever, Use old school pins and then use your nice scissors to cut around it. Uh, if you're using a rotary cutter, I wouldn't recommend using pins. You can either buy pattern weights or I actually have some rocks, like stones, decorative stones I bought at the Dollar Tree. Let me go grab them. Okay, so they're just like, you know, something you would put in an aquarium or something, but they've never been in an aquarium. So you just kind of line them up to keep your pattern still. And then you take your rotary cutter and you cut around it. 
some people I think are intimidated by this method, but it's really okay. It's not as complicated as it seems, but again, if you're used to pinning and cutting, then by all means, pin and cut. So I'm gonna go cut for both shorts and then we'll head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so we've got all of our pattern pieces cut out. Uh, for each pair of shorts, you're going to have, let's start with just the basic ones first. So you're gonna have two for the front, two for the back, and they're mirror images of themselves. So when we cut them, you know, I took my fabric and I folded it in half like this, wrong sides together. You could do right sides together, but just not a right and a wrong together and a wrong and a right together. Uh, and so they're two mirrored images. There are, usually patterns will have notches or something you can cut out to show you front and back. I realized after I cut them, I didn't do that. I don't typically do that for something so simple. Uh, the, the front and the back, the, the front is shorter than the back. Uh, and I, I, I just look at them while I'm sewing to know the difference, but, um, and especially in the, you know, the crotch is different too. So you can tell the pieces that match, but what you're gonna do, oh, and today we're gonna use two different sewing machines. So we're gonna use our regular sewing machine that just stitches our straight stitch, and then we're gonna use a serger. I'm not gonna go through um, and explain how to use a serger, I'm just gonna assume that if you have one, you know how to use it. Maybe if there's interest, I could do like a sort of a basics of serging. Uh, but if you are if you know how to use your machine and you need a fun, quick little project um, to do, this is a good one. People get really intimidated by this curve on a serger, but it's not that bad. If you're super new and you don't know what a serger is, a serger is, you know, you can see it's got these extra threads. It's the machine that gives you this sort of stitching, this very finished edge. Now, if you are doing these for yourself or a friend or whatever, you can just use a sewing machine and like pinking scissors, or you can put uh, like fray check on your seam or something. I wouldn't necessarily sell anything unless I was serging it, but that's just my opinion. Uh, you certainly could. But uh, with a cotton like this, you do have to use this first, then your serger. If you're just if you're doing a knit, you can just use your serger for almost the whole project. But for something like this, we need to use both. Plus, I do a little bit of top stitching. Uh, the top stitching isn't necessary on these, but I do think it makes a more finished garment. So the first step is you're going to take one front and one back. And you're going to, the ones that match, and you're going to put them together um, right side to right side. And you're going to put them together at that little... Uh, man, I, I should do this flat, huh? Let's do this flat. Okay, this gives you a better view. So this is the front piece. This is the back piece. We're going to sew here and serge here. And I'm going to do that on both uh, sides. So you're basically making two legs for now. Um, but you're not going to sew this part yet. You're just going to sew right here this shorty little piece. Okay, so I got those two... Um, sides sewn together on both legs and serged and then I did the most important part which I forgot to mention is pressing. When you're a new sewer you might uh, think that pressing isn't necessary. It really and truly is. It makes a huge difference between a product that looks homemade and a product that looks handmade, handcrafted. Uh, so I pressed, I pressed my seams to the opposite sides. So you can see this one's pointing that way. And then this one's pressed that way. And the reason why you do that is you, if you do them both the same way, it gets a bit bulky right there. Not a huge deal if they're both the same way. It's just a little, again, a little touch. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew and serge right here. 
and you, and this is the whole, so again, we're making two different legs. So eventually these two will go together and the ones underneath will go together. But right now we're going to sew this U and you can either pin or I like to use these clips and you can get these at Joann's. You can get them on Amazon. I've seen people buy them kind of in bulk on Amazon and say they work just as well. Uh, I've always kind of purchased mine at Joann um, with a coupon, but we're going to pin or clip all around and then take it over to my arm machine and sew and search it. And then we'll come right back. All right, so we sewed and surged our U and pressed it. You can kind of see my um, seam there. Again, iron is the most important thing. So you can tell, like I said, you can still tell which is back and which is front. These are the back pieces. These are the front pieces because the back is longer this way. So what we're going to do now is open it up and put it front to back. Now, if we were doing the ruffle version, we would put our ruffles on first. Um, but since we're doing it this way, we're just matching up our side seams. And we're gonna sew and serge here on the sides. And now it's starting to look like some shorts. But we're gonna serge these and then uh, we'll come back and talk about the hem a little bit. Okay, so the side seams are sewn and serged and pressed. And then I went ahead and serged the bottom and the top. Now when I did this, I did not cut off anything. So when you're serging, it cuts off fabric if you let it. This was just to give me a nice finished edge. Now depending on your pattern, um, is how you're going to do your hem. So if you don't have a serger, you can just roll it up, you know, twice or whatever, and then sew it. Uh, pretty similar with this. I so this serged edge then gives me a nice clean line to iron down and then flip it over again. And then I'll run a stitch here and uh, sew each hem. Uh, I believe what I'm going to do... So this pattern, I think, is supposed to be a half inch. So this will be about a quarter. So we'll go a quarter. So we'll just kind of flip it three times and do a really narrow hem. Uh, so let me take it over to the machine and do that. Okay, so they're all nice and hemmed now, a nice little narrow hem. And then I went ahead and ironed the top down. So we're going to use a three quarter inch ribbon, a ribbon, elastic. I have used a thinner elastic on these before and they work fine, um, but it's not what the, the um, pattern calls for. The pattern calls for three quarter inch. So what you're going to do is if you remember, we surged this down. So then you iron it once and then you iron it over an inch. A um, couple ways you can do this. I have a couple different little rulers I use, like that one is nice because you can mark it. You can move this purple thing to an inch and then do it like that as you iron. Uh, you can see this thing is so old. My numbers are wearing off. <laughs> My numbers are wearing off, so I don't always use it. I also have this one, which is pretty cool. So you can measure your inch like that. Um, but you want to keep it pretty consistent because you, you want your elastic to be able to fit in there without folding over. So we're not going to have a whole lot of room to get this in there, but it should be fine. So we're going to start sewing. And again, you can see the benefit of ironing because I probably won't even pin this. Now, if you're new, you might want to, to run pins down here before you sew, but I probably won't. So, again, we know which is the back because it's a little bit taller. So we're going to go ahead and start sewing from the back, but we're going to leave a gap, like about that big, to get our uh, elastic in. So we'll start sewing here, we'll go all the way around, and then we'll end here. Okay, I actually had the wrong size elastic in that last clip. 
it was an inch wide, which is why it wasn't really looking like it was going to fit in this casing. But so you can see, I sewed down the casing and you sew it, you know, pretty close to the edge there because again, you want to be able to fit this in. So I just cut this at 18 inches. These are 12 months shorts. Um, I do have this, you can use a safety pin, like a big safety pin. I do have this, um, got it at Hobby Lobby, um, when all of the sewing notions were on sale, or maybe I had a coupon or something, but, um, so you just take it in here. Well, there we go. And thread it through. Since this is longer, it doesn't take as long as with a safety pin, but so you just pull it through and you make sure you don't pull it all the way through. So we pulled it all the way through and we made sure we didn't twist it. So now this is pretty new. I got to remember how to take it off. Okay. So now we're going to take these and you overlap them about a half an inch and sew them down. I typically do mine with a zigzag stitch, stitch. I zigzag here and then I flip it over and I zigzag here. So let me go do that and then I want to show you one more trick and we'll be done. All right, so we sewed our little zigzag stitches and then that just kind of falls away into there. You can kind of straighten it out a little bit. Whoops. So my last, so you're going to have to sew this part down. Do your last bit of sewing right here. My last trick though is to take a little ribbon and I'm actually ordering some clothing labels, so I'm not gonna do this right now. But if you don't have clothing labels, you can just take a little piece of ribbon and sew it in there. And then that way, whoever buys it knows where front and back is. Um, because again, as we were sewing, we could tell but once they're all sewn together, look how cute they are. Once they're all sewn together, it's a little hard to tell. So just a little extra something for people. Um, or if you're sewing them for your own kid, you can tell your kid, you know, ribbon goes in the back. So anyway, I think um, I'm going to stop there for today. I'm not going to do the uh, one with the ruffle because I can't even think of what a ruffle is right now. I've had my hair up. Um, I've had my jacket on, my jacket off, my jacket on again. So I think we're done. It's Friday. Let's go have a glass of wine. Um, if you are really, really interested in the ruffle uh, tutorial, please uh, message down below so I know, um, and I'll make a follow-up video with that. But um, otherwise, if you found any value in this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you soon. Happy Friday. Bye.